Did Luther have an early affinity for mysticism? And if so, should we be mystics? Hi, my name is Ted Rosenblatt, and I'm here with my father, Dr. Rod Rosenblatt, and this is Talks with Dad Rod. Luther had an interesting path as he entered Christianity. He started as a, a lawyer. He was, a, you know, under his, his father year, sent him to law one school. One year of law school. <clears throat> and it was uh, a crisis for him to go and admit to his father he was not going to pursue law. But <clears throat> Luther, in many ways, like you find in Jean Veith's book, The Spirituality of the Cross, Luther admitted that he tried many things on the way to finally getting to St. Paul. And one of the ones that he tried along the way was the writings of Tauler, German mystic. And he tried that for a while, and it fell out from underneath him, uh, just like many others did. But it wasn't for lack of trying it. Um, so Luther is, is simple to understand in the way that he says, yeah, I tried that. I dug into Towler for a long while to see if there was anything there that would be of help to me in my problem with my sin. And the answer was no, it, it didn't. And didn't it, that was just a precursor to him continuing, from my perspective, it seems like he was continuing that into becoming an Augustinian monk. He was in, always in pursuit of achieving the thing that would bring him the consolation that he sought. Yep, that's exactly right. <clears throat> Good bio of Luther, the old standard, is Roland Bainton, Here I Stand. Uh, Bainton was not a Lutheran, a professor at Yale, and he became particularly interested in Luther and wrote a simple book. Many high schoolers have done book reports on Bainton's Here I Stand, and it's a, it's a good one to, to be introduced to who he was and what led to the Reformation. So, so the mysticism, is, is that just the standard kind of stuff that we human beings are drawn to? That's, I, th I think there is, in most of us, a yearning that that might be true. It's direct contact with God, no mediator, no atonement, not necessary. A whole bunch of Christian things have to go. <clears throat> uh, Edith Hamilton probably wrote the definitive book, Mysticism. That's the standard one that all scholars go to. Um, but it's... Evelyn it. Underhill. Pardon? Evelyn Underhill. Evelyn Underhill. Thanks, Rick. Evelyn Underhill. Mysticism. <clears throat> so there's a, a very large anthology or collection of the writings of the mystics in one book. I think there's a way in which all of us somehow are curious about it, but it really is clouds without rain. Well, even C.S. Lewis was drawn to some of that stuff. He yes. was always wanting to... It's it, from my perspective, it, it, it helps us bridge the, the struggle of faith, right? When you can get your hands into something, you feel like you can do something, and that's actually taking less faith because you're doing it. You're actually yes. getting some sort of it's positive feedback. You're justification getting, by experience. Because living by faith is hard. As I said to a friend once, we were griping at each other one morning, and I was like, dude, this living by faith thing is rough. You know, this is, there are moments that it's just, it's just hard. You know, it's like our last episode, you know, talking about, about uh, Hebrews 1038. And it's just, I don't care who you are. I mean, there, there are exceptions to the rule, but, but most of us wake up on some days and we ain't feeling it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there are reasons that in the earliest years of Christianity, it was considered a scandal. The very claim was considered scandalous. Which claim? The claim that Christ died for you and things are going to be okay because the contractual he dealt with, he signed the contract for you, died for you, bled for you, rose again for you so that you can be confident. I get the sense that we're kind of coming back to that scandal again in our current day and I age. I do too. Um, that... that the simple gospel is becoming increasingly offensive on a graph, yep. you know, 
um, we're leaving our comfort zone. We're getting into a time when it becomes... Uh, There's a reason the churches are painted graffiti and, <clears throat> and statues of Mary are overthrown and so forth. There's a reason for that. It's, it's a developing hostility of our unbelieving culture to the scandal of the gospel. And God, through his, God's sufficiency through his son, yep. that this gift, that it would be entirely gift, yep. and that it would be sufficient. Yep. And that I am pure recipient, and that I really have nothing to do with that. It's, yep. it's his decision. Yep. I don't like that. Yep. I would rather do something. Correct. Can't I just break out my Ouija board and talk to grandma? Yeah, correct. Or something? Yep. Even though we're commanded explicitly never do that. Yep. But see, okay, uh, well, what do we learn from Romans? It's like t- being told not to look down. Don't touch that. Yeah. What's the first thing we do? Excellent. Yes. Let's break it out. Yes. Yeah, I would not have known coveting until the law said to me, thou shalt not covet. Don't touch that Ouija board. Ooh. Yep. It seems to glow in the dark. I like that. Yep. We're, we're sorely tempted to dabble, and it sounds like, you know, Luther had the same exact temptation. Luckily, he went along this path. Luther, we'll, we'll talk about this in other points, but Luther, you got to understand, got to take him in phases. You yeah. know, his, his, original, his original work on Romans wasn't nearly as good as what he did with uh, oh, Galatians. Galatians. Right. Yeah, in Romans, he hadn't yet gotten it. And really, it was through Melanchthon that he really... Uh, <clears throat> began to get the nature of the imputed righteousness. Melanchthon was trained in humanism, but he, he knew how to read, like the, all, the humanists knew how to read well. And it was Melanchthon's help. Lowell Green writes a book, How Melanchthon Helped Luther Discover the Gospel. Uh, we've, 1517 has gotten permission to reprint that book. Lowell Green, How Melanchthon Helped Luther Discover the Gospel. Well, as usual, Dad's always coming up with a reading list for you, as uh, one of our <laughs> commenters spoke of recently. So we will keep, uh, we'll keep linking to it so that you can pick these things up. Uh, whatever, whatever comes out of Dad, I will make sure is linked <laughs> as much as I can. Uh, he, although Dad has been known historically to have a book list that is unacquirable, <laughs> unobtainable, uh, where students are just rolling their eyes going, ugh. <laughs> it's a reading list that can't be had, but uh, luckily most of these are. So hope you enjoy this. Hope this is helpful for you. Come to 1517.org for more, and we will see you on social media. Thank you for joining us on Talks with Dad Rod, part of the 1517 Podcast Network. This podcast and all 1517's content is made possible through financial support by listeners just like you. Please visit 1517.org for more, and please consider clicking on the donate button and making a recurring or one-time contribution to help us share this good news in a world which so desperately needs it.